The Last of Us has just come out on HBO and a lot of people are very excited about it because it's an adaptation of one of the best games of all time. It takes place in a post-apocalyptic world where a parasitic fungus turned most of humanity into terrifying mind-controlled mutants. And you follow Joel Miller, the broken man who's tasked with transporting a girl called Ellie Williams across the country. Ellie is immune to the infection and along the way you realise there's no black and white and that life is far more harrowing than you ever could have imagined. It's a bit like Cormac McCarthy's The Road but with mushrooms and fungus as well. But how real is it? Could fungus really infect the human race? Could it cause a deadly pandemic and brain controlled zombies? Well I'm Daniel Grant, this is Real Medicine and let's find out. <laughs> The game came out in 2013 and is basically one of the best video games ever made. It takes place 20 years after the outbreak called the Cordyceps brain infection. Cordyceps is a fungus and it invades the brain and turns the host hostile. They then transform into abominations which eventually spread the infection further. The game was developed by Neil Druckmann and he actually based it on something that happens in real life. Yes, Cordyceps is a real fungus, and yes, it can mind control and kill you. If you're an ant, that is. In 2008, Neil watched this clip from David Attenborough's Planet Earth, and it gave him the idea. Spores from a parasitic fungus called Cordyceps have infiltrated their bodies and their minds. Like something out of science fiction, the fruiting body of the cordyceps erupts from the ant's head. So sweet dreams everyone. In fact, there are thousands of types of cordyceps fungi and each one specializes in one different species. So Neil Druckmann thought that that could happen to humans, but can it? Well, before we get into cordyceps, it's worth noting that fungal infections in the human race are actually quite common. You've probably had one. Most of them are concerning things like athlete's foot and ringworm and thrush in here or down there are pretty common examples. And what do these places have in common? Well, they're moist. 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 And they're warm. And that's where fungus likes to grow. But you know where else is moist and warm? Your lungs. And sometimes people get infections there and it might even spread into the bloodstream or the brain. And that might kill you. In fact, a very sadly, a two-year-old boy in the UK died very recently from being exposed to mould in his house. Now, there are about 150,000 fungal species that we know of, and only about 200 of them are infectious to people. And even then, your body's immune system is so good at fighting it off that you probably won't get anything too serious. That is, unless you're immunocompromised. We do have antifungal drugs, but here's the problem. They don't work as well as they used to. That's because a lot of anti fungal drugs or azoles are used for crops and just like bacteria and antibiotics the fungi are getting resistant to the antifungals. In fact the WHO published a report that put four fungi on the critical list of extremely worrying. Cryptococcus neoformans which is a yeast that infects the lungs and can also infect the brain. Aspergillus fumigatus which is found all over the world. You can get that in your respiratory tract. Candida albicans which causes thrush in many people and is actually part of your normal microbiome, but in some people it's invasive and deadly. And Candida auris, which was only first discovered in someone's ear canal in 2009. And since 2009, it's been associated with a bunch of infections and even prolonged outbreaks in four continents. Invasive fungal infections cause about 1.5 million deaths per year. So, going back to The Last of Us, could there be a pandemic of a fungal infection? Yes. Is it likely? Probably not right now, but as resistance increases, the infections will be harder to kill. And remember I said that fungi like it warm and moist? Well, climate change is real and the world is getting warmer. Climate change can affect your health. And if you don't believe me, check out this video afterwards, another video I made just to scare you. Yes, climate change will create the perfect conditions for fungi to spread. But in The Last of Us, 
the spores are spread a bit like zombie bites. You have to avoid the host. In fact, in the game, you need to wear a mask half the time to stop you breathing in the spores, but HBO thought that you couldn't make a TV show where the main character is masked up for the whole time. Isn't that right, Pedro Pascal? This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. But we also like to see beautiful actors' faces, so never mind, look, so would well, they bite each other? But in fungal terms, you're probably not going to catch a fungal infection from someone else. You're more likely to catch it from the environment. Remember Aspergillus fumigatus from earlier, one of the critical fungal infections? Well, you probably have already breathed in 50 spores of that today. No, no, you don't say that part. <laughs> so a global fungal pandemic possible, but can it control your brain? In The Last of Us, people go through four stages of infection, and during every stage, the fungus controls you, changing your personality, removing your sentience, and can a fungus really do that? I mean, can anything do that? Well, yes. Things can. Recreational drugs do it all the time. General illnesses do it to some extent. I mean, when you're ill, you do feel a bit sorry for yourself and sometimes you're a bit of a dick to other people, so your personality is changing a bit. But you normally know about that. More worryingly is when you have an infection that you don't know about and it's slowly changing who you are. Uh, let's get rid of the one-off, really rare things that just change personalities in one person. Let's aim bigger. Toxoplasma. Now, it's not a fungus, it's a single cell parasite and it can infect your brain. In fact, it's pretty common. 30 to 60% of people in the whole world have been infected with this at some point and the older you get, the more likely you are to get it. Now, sometimes it stays in your body and goes latent and it goes to sleep in your brain. brain, brain, brain. So let me tell you about rats. Experiments were done to assess the personalities of rats with toxoplasma infections, and one of them had this big area. Now the rats are over here, and there's food over here, and in the middle, there's this big bright light, but it's dark around the edges. Now normally the rats go around the edge to avoid the light because it's safer, but rats with the infection, well, they just ran straight through the middle. They had reduced fear, and they had reduced reaction times. Now back to humans, they did research on car crash victims in Prague and France, and when they did the autopsies and cut into their brains, guess what they found? More often than they should have, they found toxoplasma infections in humans. The infection reduced fear, made the judgment worse, and decreased reaction time, which led to more car crashes. But can fungus get into your brain and turn you into a zombie with purpose? Well, probably not. A human brain is far more complicated than the brain of an ant, which is a science fact. And our immune systems are much better than theirs. And we also haven't evolved alongside fungus for millions of years. And actually, recent research is showing that the fungus in the ants doesn't really affect the brain directly. It manipulates a whole bunch of other factors and organ systems to take the ant over. But most reassuringly than everything, cordyceps, the fungus from The Last of Us and from insect nightmares everywhere, doesn't infect humans. Oh, thank God. So, could there be a fungal pandemic? Yes. Is it gonna be serious? Hmm, maybe. But will it turn us into zombies? No. So for realism, I give The Last of Us four spores out of 10. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and hit that mushroom button. And if you want me to break down medicine from any other movies or TV shows, let me know in the comments below. Bye-bye.